rising death toll and massive evacuation in Indonesia as floodwaters swarm Greater Jakarta following the heaviest downpour in more than two decades. Australia braces for more raging bushfires as it totals up the cost in lives and properties from the scourge in New South Wales and Victoria. New South Wales has declared a state of emergency over seven days starting tomorrow. So that means that authorities can force people to evacuate. And now for more on the developments, we're joined by Dr. Agus Santoso, Senior Research Scientist at the University of New South Wales Climate Change Research Centre. He's speaking from New York. Thank you very much, Dr. Agus, for speaking to us. First up, so let's look at Australia. It's been devastated by bushfires. So is there any doubt that the flames are being fanned by climate change? Well, to me, there are many factors influencing uh, bushfires, but the severity of the bushfires could be, you know, at, at least in part attributed to climate change. Yes. Dr. Santoso, what are some mitigation strategies that Australia can implement moving forward, though? The country has seen bushfires in the past, some very devastating ones as well. This continues to happen. Bushfires is always a problem for Australia, and you know, you know if you expect a drought, then one of the mitigation strategies that Australia has been doing is actually doing a back burning during winter time. So they burn the bushes to prepare for the upcoming summer season. Um, as we know, with climate change, the soil will get drier, and there will actually be more. Uh, Trees, there will be fuel for the fire, so you should prepare to burn the fuel first, you know, the leaves, and which will get drier during the upcoming summer drought. Right, and this is obviously not helping because, you know, there's going to be winds as well and the temperature will be increasing. But let's look at um, Jakarta because it's the opposite that's happening for Jakarta right now. It's experiencing its most intense period of rainfall since uh, what record keeping began more than 20 years ago. Help us understand what could this be caused by? You see, uh, this one is one, uh, one is, you know, there are lots of water and one is not enough water. And um, coincidentally, there is a very big phenomenon that happened a few months ago. And that phenomenon is called the Indian Ocean Dipole. The Indian Ocean Dipole is similar, uh, is similar to El Nino. If you know El Nino is a climate phenomenon in the Pacific, mm -hmm. Indian Ocean Dipole is an El Nino-like phenomenon in the Indian Ocean. And we had a positive phase of the Indian Ocean Dipole, which means uh, the water around Indonesia was cooling. And that cooler water also uh, reduced the amount of moisture available for uh, rainfall over Indonesia as well as Australia. Now, um, over Australia, it's understandable. You can get drier summer because of the positive effects of the Indian Ocean Dipole. But over Indonesia, what the Indian Ocean Dipole does is actually reducing the amount of moisture for uh, the soil. So when um, you get the monsoon, monsoon rainfall coming in in January, the soil is already dry. So it cannot contain lots of uh, much water. Uh, so that we can, it can cause uh, issue for flood right. to, to occur. Um, yeah, but also Indian Ocean Dipole tends to evolve into a warming Indian Ocean. Now for Jakarta and Western part of Indonesia, uh, is more influenced by what's going on in the Indian Ocean. And the Indian Ocean ha also has a strongest warming trend over the past decades compared to other oceans. And that is partly contributed by climate change. So there seems to be a struggle for solutions for Indonesia, but what flood mitigation controls can be implemented, taking, into, can, taking all that into account? Uh, Indonesia has a very complex problem, uh, especially Jakarta. It's a low-lying coastal area, and it has a, a you know, groundwater problem, and the land is sinking. So I would say that the best mit uh, flood mitigation would be, you know, to, to manage the drainage system and control, you, you know, what what it has a very big population of Jakarta. So you need to control what people are actually doing, and y yes. Uh, and we, we, Jakarta also talk about moving the capital city uh, to Kalimantan, you know, Borneo, mm -hmm. Kalimantan. 
Um, Dr. Agus, if this is going to happen, if this is going to be recurring, uh, you know, should there be fears that there's going to be, you know, severe droughts every time something like this happens, every time it rains? This, um, I'm afraid, will be a recurring problem. And the best that we can do in society is to adapt, to, but also um, try to reduce the amount of um, carbon dioxide being put into the atmosphere. So countries like Indonesia and Australia, you know, it's a climate change a global problem. You cannot uh, do it by your own in a, as a country, but it's, it is a start. And every country has to contribute to um, reducing the amount of greenhouse gas in, into the atmosphere. All right, thank you so much for your analysis. We've been speaking with Dr. Agus Santoso, Senior Research Scientist at the University of New South Wales Climate Change Research Centre, speaking to us in New York.